Hello world, Fox here, FXRC, FXRC, I'm here to talk about the new Arma Creighton EXB Extreme Bash Roller. Uh, I love the fact that Arma is doing rollers now, um, especially a, a, I guess, modified roller with a few high-ender parts. So glad to see that Arm is really listening to the RC community. Uh, I feel like no other RC company listens as much as Arma, uh, which is why they're one of my favorites for sure, especially the eight scale Armas. Uh, it's something about just that they, they really are amazing RCs, so let's get into what makes this one so special. I mean, look at how awesome that looks. I mean, you can't help definitely be excited about this truck because it is badass. If you like the Armor Creighton, if you like the Armor Creighton, then there's no reason you're not gonna love this. And really what they did is just kind of, I mean, they definitely changed a few things, but they already went ahead and upgraded a few few things also so that you don't have to, which is nice. So get the body off and look inside and kind of go over what looks different and what I can tell anyway, besides from this ingenious front bumper here. So we'll talk about that in a minute. So if you're new to the channel, what we do here, or what I try to do here is take already pretty sick RC and try to make them even sicker. <laughs> Look at all that. So if you are new, you should consider subscribing. Definitely give me a thumbs up and maybe even sharing the video. And it's nice to see that the Arma's doing some rollers now. For, for people like me that like to put our own electric system into the vehicles because that is the heart and soul of the vehicle. Uh, and I guess once you kind of know enough about what you're doing, you like to choose your own. So, not that there's anything wrong with the, some of these ready to run, especially armor ready to run vehicles. Uh, the BLX system is amazing. Um, probably one of the best R2R uh, systems. So, but some of those like the little things better. So anyway, I'm gonna look at that and get the body off and then we'll kind of see if we can go over what I can see is different and what they've changed to make better, stronger, more extreme bash. Look, get the body seems to be about the same, just a paint job, but really no different. Uh, you know, I, I gotta say for an extreme bash, I, I probably would have liked to seen a thicker body. Um, maybe something a little bit more like the Outcast. Uh, this is not gonna um, last. I mean, it, they're okay. You, you definitely have to reinforce them if you want them to last. Either the shoe glue and the and the uh, drywall tape or or the hot glue. I, I I prefer the hot glue method. It takes a long time, but uh, the payoff seems to be pretty good. So anyway, good enough body. It'll do the trick. That look at all that shiny red aluminum. So I guess one of the biggest things they did was change the actual alloy to 7075, which is definitely stronger than what they were using. I don't remember, I think it was like a 60 something. I don't remember exactly, but the 7075 is supposed to be stronger. So I'm sure it will be. I don't believe that the chassis is any thicker. I, th I think it's just a stronger metal. Um, I could be wrong, but 
now that I'm sure that goes for all the aluminum in the, the, the rig itself, or I guess I'm assuming is that these are shock towers are also 7075. The front, they did not change the geometry. It looks the same. It looks like a, the same shock tower as, as the V4, but the rear, they definitely changed that. Uh, they, they got rid of the ears and I don't know if it's for bending issues or what, but uh, they changed it for sure. The, so the actual outermost most hole on this one is farther in than the innermost hole on the V4. So actually I happen to have a whole box of everything that I took out of my armor crate in V4. So this is everything that came out of it. But it give me have some parts here that we can actually do some comparison. So as far as thickness, the shock towers actually don't look any thicker. And if it is, it's minuscule. Um, I could bring out the calipers, but I, I mean, it's not, it's pretty close to the same. I think the difference is just the stronger aluminum. So maybe they're more, less likely to bend. Um, once uh, I finish going through what I see is different, I will go through what I plan to put into it. So anyway, stronger aluminum, different geometry on the rear shock tower, and then aluminum center bracing. This is something they probably should have done in all of the, the eight scale success armors is this aluminum bracing. What a difference this is gonna make in the, the how rigid that chassis stays. So glad to see they did that, especially, I mean, obviously it's a stream bash. They would probably definitely have to do that. But also an aluminum servo mount. Also something I feel like they probably should have been doing anyway, but glad to see it in this. So once again, I, I mean, it, those are, that's three things right there that I don't have to do. So that's great. So anyway, stronger servo saver spring. I, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure this definitely is stronger. Um, it's got that silver color, which usually indicates that's stronger, but also there's, there's more, it wraps around more times, or at least you can see more of the spring actually wrapping around. So I believe it is going to be a stronger spring, which is nice. Uh, the, you put a really strong servo in these and, and that stock spring uh, definitely didn't hold up and you ended have to do a mod to tighten up that spring or change it out. So glad to see they did that also. Now one of my absolute favorite things that they did are these H arms and these A arms. They are incredibly thick and beefy. Um, I mean, they they look to be nearly twice as thick as, as the, the old stock ones. Um, so I have a stock H arm here for the old Creighton V4 compared to that stock arm. Look at that, this thing is just incredibly more reinforced. Like I said, uh, they definitely changed some of the geometry. I'm not sure if things are gonna really line up in different places now. Um, it does almost seem like it might maybe a little bit further in than the, what it used to be, but I could be wrong. It, I mean, it looks like the they might be, but I'll know when I actually get into taking it apart. So definitely love these arms. I love them, the look of them so much. I actually ordered a pair for that Creighton. Um, I love the RPM arms in the aspect that it takes an awful lot to break them but because they're so flexible i feel like you lose some of that connection to the ground and that rigidness and, and it kind of just makes it i don't know if bouncy or what um but there's just a lot of flex in the arms with the rpm um more so than the, the, even the stock uh, v4 version arms uh, but the problem with the V4s is that they would snap and break uh, and the RPMs take a lot more to do that. They still break, but not quite as easy as the stock ones. So um, I, I'm sure these will break too. 
on this one at some point everything gives nothing's indestructible but these are insanely thick and strong and beefy so the incredibly awesome upgrade the other thing is the stock wing mount this thing is a lot thicker than the stock before wing mount uh that it's got it i mean it is very thick and very beefy i i think this thing is gonna have a lot of trouble breaking i'm, I'm sure that it will at some point break but it is so much stronger than the, the stock i think i have yeah so i mean there's a i don't know if it's going to come out on camera how the, the difference in thickness here but uh it's i mean look at how the thickness difference is night and day it's got to be at least one and a half of the i mean yeah yeah it's gonna be at least a half more thicker than than the old one so I, i'm super super glad to see that so what else going to talk about some stuff that we can't see and that is the limited slip diffs one in the front there's one in the middle and then i believe the rear is uh just regular diff um i'm not sure how it's going to work out i don't know what the idea maybe is just to, so that it doesn't bleed all the power out to the front of the vehicle and it pushes it to the back maybe but i don't know maybe not uh i guess maybe they're just better gears because uh, they have the bevel is a little bit bigger or something the teeth is a little wider maybe or something like that where it's just gonna have a, a better gear connection so stronger anyway which is always good to see and really what else uh, the aluminum front upper hinge pin brace solo aluminum that's nice because that is definitely something that you had to upgrade so that's just that's saving you some time something right there uh I, I don't know if it's they did it to make it stronger which is definitely going to do uh or they did it because they had to address the uh front pin issue this pin always backs out and m2c actually made a upgrade that there's a, uh, a little piece of metal thing that you can put over this and screw it in with the bottom one to make it so this one can't come out uh and it's a pretty cheap fix so i didn't after doing that it never had a problem again um so I'm, but I'm glad to see they addressed it now once in a while you'll come down real hard and this tire will jam up and the dog bone in here will come out and it will lock the tire lock the whole thing uh compressed up and you got to take out this this pin right here to free it up so you can get the do, uh, drive bone back into the cup um uh, you, could, you could do it down here you could take the wheel off and you could take the actual hub carrier off uh, but the easiest way is to just take this pin off and take that out now to get this out you have to get to that screw up here that's to get to that screw you have to take this off um so Really, I mean, it's not that big a deal. It's one, two screws here, and then you can get to that screw, which will take the pin out. So, uh, not that big a deal. Just something different, I guess. Anyway, as far as what else? Ah, yes, they got the, the um, I wanna say it's the Mojave 6S uh, shock rod ends. Um, HD shock rod ends or whatever on the which is awesome to see. I'm glad they put those on there because I why not right? Uh, they're they're probably the some of the best shock rod ends you can get composite anyway. Besides going, I guess to aluminum, but uh, they have their problems too and they do break. So what are you gonna do? Look at these arms. Even got these little those little uh, aluminum end caps on the front A arm there. I don't know what that does, if it somehow makes it stronger or what, but it sure does look nice. So, what else? Oh, something that I think is absolutely amazing, and it's really something simple, but they put sealed bearings throughout this. I am so glad to see they did that. Uh, you know, I'm surprised that they haven't already done that in all their other uh, RCs, especially the ones that are considered waterproof um which i think all of them really so why not have the, the sealed bearings it's something that you always had to do 
I mean, it's only about 20 bucks, I guess, something like that, to, to get a bearing kit and go through and do all your bearings. So it's nice to see they did that. So that's another another 20 they saved you the hassle of doing, spending the money on and doing. So it's good to see that. And like I said, I mean, I believe it's throughout. Um, I won't know until I actually take the dips apart and taking this thing apart and starting to go through. So Th they changed that, that front uh, plate there. The, um, I don't know, the whatever they call it there. The steering plate, I guess. And, uh, I don't think it's, I mean, maybe because they're stronger metal, but it's black now. So, and they wrote EXB and then it says compatible. <laughs> I don't know what that means or why it says compatible. EXB compatible, I don't know, but it looks nice. So, what else, what else? Obviously they changed the color any of this. I, I don't know if it's a stronger metal. I've never really had a problem with, with these anyway. Um, so I don't, I don't know, but I like the fact that it's shiny now, but I like shiny things. So anyway, I really think that is about all I can really see that's any different. You know, I, I, they still have the M3 bolts here in the back holding this on. All right, I believe that's an M3. Anyway, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's an M3. I, I'm not sure why they didn't put M4s. That would, I feel like that would have been it's just a really easy, cheap upgrade for them to do, um, to put a larger bolt in the back there, just to make that a little bit stronger. Uh, I'm not sure why. God, one, I mean, that's obviously not another M2C upgrade you can do for fairly cheap money. Definitely worthy upgrade because these absolutely will break. So anyway, all in all, this truck looks amazing. Oh yeah, the front bumper. Look at that front thing. So this bumper looks genius. Uh, and then they just made this really, it looks like it could really take a beating and they got this little, I don't know, it's supposed to maybe absorb or whatever. But what really makes it cool is that um, with most front bumpers for these uh, 6S, they actually screw on through the chassis into the diff case and it holds the diff case down. So, but every once in a while, you come down too hard to something, you hit that bumper, the bumper pulls out through the bolts and then you got that slack holding on your front uh, hole, really the whole hub here, because that's what the diff case is what holding it on. Uh, and it, I mean, the, st the springs and, and then the uh, droop screws and all that keep the pressure on it, so you can't tell, but I mean, you're getting dirt and stuff in there and it's just not a good idea, so uh, I'm glad they addressed that. Now, I, they also, they have this amazing etching on the bottom here that they've been doing. I've been seeing a lot of their, their rigs now. It looks amazing. But I can't help but think that if this costs them money to do, then why not not do this? Save the money and put it in to something else because that's all gonna get scratched off and I could care less if it's there. Uh, I can't see anybody buying this truck because it's got amazing etching on the underneath the chassis. Um, I mean, I guess it's attention to detail and it looks nice. But like I said, it's all gonna get scratched off. Well, not on mine because I'm gonna be replacing it with that four millimeter M2C Goliath chassis, or I don't know if it's called Goliath chassis, but it's the four millimeter M2C chassis. So, which will get me into, oh yeah, they, they redid the droop screws too. They, it's more of a, uh, it's like a techno style droop screw, which is a lot better than the, the look more like a lock bolt before. But now it's an actual, if I can get in somewhere where you can actually see, what well you can see there. So you can't actually screw it from the top anymore. You gotta lift it up and you can actually screw it from the bottom. But it's, it's a lot nicer. I'm glad they did this. The, uh, 
that, those old jupe screws really weren't that great so i'm glad they changed that it was something i always definitely changed so once again this is something else that i don't have to do with this one uh so i'm glad they did so why why have two cratons right i already have a craton and this one's as, literally as upgraded as it can get. I don't think there's really much anything else I can do besides now that I'm going to have these these Aeons on it. Um, yeah, I love armor Cratons. I love armors. So why not have two amazing Cratons? Right? So what am I going to put in it? Well, I already told you about the M2C chassis. So I guess for the, the heart and soul of the vehicle is going to be the electronics. And for my electronics, I am going to go with this amazing Savox servo here, which is a SB2290SG. Uh, this, this servo is amazing. It's only downflow as I believe that it's not waterproof. I think Savox servos, a lot of them are, are water resistant, but I don't think it's waterproof. But it's, its pros are that it is like... 700 ounces of the torque on 7.4 volts and if you can get this at 8.4 volts it's like a 900 ounce into the torque that's insane that is insane um and i have one of these tiny little servos on that x max with those big tires and it it works great so i'm um, super impressed with it i can't necessarily speak to its longevity because um i i haven't had them now i've had i have a few but i haven't had them very long so uh but if it's anything like the other savox servos i'm sure that it'll hold up so anyway moving on uh i'm gonna put it all to the spectrum receiver uh these are great receivers um and then i'll power it with my dx5c uh this is my pretty much my main basher radio uh and and uh receiver combos so and they've been working out great the Hobby Wing Max 6 ESC. Uh, this ESC is a beast, um, especially, when, I mean, it's for a larger vehicle, I guess, I mean, you could say, but uh, once you start adding all that weight, this is, uh, it's appropriate. So um, it's an amazing ESC, it's definitely a tank. And then um, the beautiful Hobby Wing 4985 6S, 1650 KV, uh, just a beast of a motor, crazy torque, um, just a great motor, success, great success motor. Uh, you know, I have been using these Mamba Monster X, and, and, and as far as there's a lot of good things about this ESC opposed to the Max 6, it has stronger BEC, uh, you know, and, and it's lighter. It is significant, I mean, enough where it's a noticeable lighter than the Max 6. Uh, the fans are terrible, they break so easy. But besides that, I mean, that's an easy fix. I mean, you can, $20, you can get a really good fan. And it's got a 40 millimeter fan. So it's also a bigger fan than the Max 6. Uh, and it's easy to replace because it just has like a little plate that you put on top, whereas the, the Max 6 has this whole cover system. So I don't know. Uh, but the, is, and, and so this is also censored. Bashing, not necessarily that important, I guess, but it's just another plus that this has over the Max 6. So, uh, you know, the lightness of it is, is amazing because, I mean, especially when you're adding so much weight that anytime you can try to get the weight down, it's always a good thing when you're jumping vehicles and bashing really hard. So, moving on to the next, my favorite, favorite Arma upgrade are these hot racing aluminum diff cases. There's a few plate people uh, that make uh, aluminum diff cases. Um, maybe GPM makes some. Um, I know Vivatron, uh, uh, Viva, some, man, I can't think of the name, but I know there's another company there too that makes some, um, that make the diff cases. And really just some, some kind of aluminum diff case is an, such an amazing upgrade for these vehicles because it's the, absolutely the hub of the front and the rear. It's what everything screws to. And if you can screw that all to aluminum opposed to composite, why not? It's definitely gonna make the vehicle stronger. So now anytime you, you add aluminum opposed to composite, you're adding weight, which isn't necessarily a good thing. Uh, and keeping the weight down is always uh, really, I mean, it's a, it's kind of a trade-off whether you, you want 
to, to keep the weight down or, or throw some aluminum and, and add weight but lose that flexibility. So, you know, it's really just a, a trade-off. So I can't necessarily say that these are gonna make it so much more stronger than, than the composite because the composite's a lot lighter, especially when you have it all together, opposed to having all aluminum. It just, I can't necessarily say. I mean, it might just be better to have all composite and super light vehicle, and maybe it'll break less. I don't know. But I like shiny things, so, and I like to upgrade. So hot racing diff cases, and then my next favorite thing to do is these hot racing hub carriers. They, they work great. They actually come with sealed bearings already, um, which used to be a plus because the old uh, one Arma were not sealed uh, bearings. So this one doesn't matter because it has sealed bearings. So I guess I'll have extra. But so I, I, the fronts I think are more important than the rear because the ball actually once in a while will pull out of that if you hit it just right or and, and it'll kind of crack on the side sometimes but the aluminum will kind of eliminate that i want to say it doesn't necessarily uh rock like roll onto the actual ball maybe as smoothly as it does the composite but it's a definitely a lot stronger so as far as i'm doing the front i might as well do the rear so which is also like i said not quite as important the rear hub carriers on this are very very strong the composite ones but aluminum is always stronger so got those what else the whole so i got all these m2c bracings that i'm gonna do uh, I know, so definitely gonna put the ones on the rear. The front, I don't know how I'm gonna get this to work with this bumper. Uh, the M2C uh, front hinge pin bracing doesn't utilize those two uh, 3M bolts that will be for the, the rear of the bumper, the front bumper. Uh, so I don't know if I'm gonna be able to finagle these to work. Uh, I know I can get I do have a hot racing uh, front rear hinge pin that does you use those two 3m bolts So I can definitely use that but I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with the front uh, I'm, I'm sure somebody will come out with with a hinge pin an aluminum one a solid aluminum one because there is aluminum in these composite ones It's just kind of aluminum plate and then maybe because the aluminum stronger now and that they use that stronger aluminum in those hemp pin bracing that the it'll be a lot better system in this truck but i'm not sure don't know yet and we'll find out so anyway so i got that got that uh this is the actual center diff uh this goes this is the car the top of it and this is the other side piece and that's just gonna make that whole center diff aluminum um, not really important it's just something I like to do so I can't really speak on the fact that if it makes it any stronger or not I, I doubt it. it really it's probably just adding unnecessary weight but I think with the new aluminum the Aikman bar lo looks the same it doesn't really look any different uh, as far as like the width of it and the actual design but I until I actually take it apart and get a good look I won't be able to know but I do have this amazing M2C one that are just a lot better than the old V4 ones but like I said I don't know about the new one so and how easy they will bend or won't bend but I have it so I don't know maybe I'll just throw it on as far as the, to the tower to tower brace I have the aluminum that goes on to the actual ends of the tower tower so that's composite so i got the aluminum to change that out as well as the aluminum front and rear mounts so in hot racing i i like the hot racing uh, more they work great but the, the color is just kind of matches the black and red scheme hot racing usually does that so that I just, uh, cause I know there's other companies that make these hinge pin, uh, these bracings that I'm sure are just fine. Uh, I just like hot racing, so. As far as, this is my aluminum, hot racing aluminum servo horn with the actual linkage 
Now this comes with an aluminum servo horn that works great. Uh, there's no need to really change it out except for aesthetics just to make it look because I can't see uh, this composite is pretty strong and it's short enough where I don't see it being a weak spot. I've never really had a problem with them, but this looks a hell of a lot nicer, so why not? What else? I got some uh, aluminum uh, buttons for the wing. That'll look nice. Then the, the four millimeter M2C standoffs that I mentioned earlier, that's a, that's a huge plus and um, a must. I think, uh, cause why not, right? Like, I don't know if I'm gonna drill the holes into the, these beautiful red shock towers, or if I'm just gonna put the M2C on and, and go ahead and drill these holes out to four mil. So I do have the rear RPM skid plate put underneath the chassis. And then in case, worst case scenario, I cannot get that front bumper to work with better hinge pin bracing I do have an RPM bumper um, but I tell you what I'm going to try like hell to get this bumper to work so um, because it's just it's absolutely amazing uh, and from what I've seen so far it, it takes a beating so I, I really want to get a chance to try it out so and really get to see if it works well uh, and then I do have a wheelie bar. Uh, I put them on a lot of them. And I, I just like having it on there, so. And I believe that's about it. So I got the, the M2C zero re rebound bladderless uh, shock caps. Um, I'm definitely gonna be using these pistons because these pistons are a lot better than the armor pistons just because of the whole, the, the seal around it and the way they work they're just a thicker plastic i just they work a lot better um i don't know if i'm gonna put the caps on right away i have a set on the crate and the outcast and i'm just kind of get seeing how it plays out so i don't know if i'm gonna use these right away but anyway this should look pretty sick when it's done so with all of that in there it's funny, this, all of this costs more than this. So, it's great. Now, I know this seems like quite a bit of stuff, but I assure you, this pile is a lot smaller than the pile of stuff I had when I did this crate. So, I mean, that just goes to show, how, you know, how much they did do for this, you know? Oh yeah, I, I forgot one of those huge things, aluminum upper hinge pin there. Uh, and that's an actual solid aluminum piece. So I'm super glad to see that. That's definitely, that's one less piece that you have to buy. Uh, I don't know if they did it to, for the strength or because they had to do something for this whole front pin system, which is completely different than the old one, where this would back out. Um, and M2C did make a fix for it, but now you won't need it with this. It actually is secured by a screw there. Um, now every once in a while, you can come down on this tire and it, it lifts up enough where the actual bone comes out of that cup in there and it jams the whole thing up. And the only way to get it is to either release this pin to get that pressure off so you can set it, the, the dog bone back into the, uh, the, I mean the dry shaft back into the uh, actual cup. I mean, or you could take the tire off and take the front. Uh, it's, a, it's super easy, a lot easier just to take that off. Before you could just unscrew this, but now you actually have to, uh, to get to that bolt, you have to take these two off, then you can take this piece off here, and then you can actually get to that screw. Um, unless you have like a weird, one of those uh, Allens that are bent, and maybe you can kind of get in there and unscrew it, I guess, but anyway, that's it's not really a big a deal. So I'm glad they're doing things to just to innovate and try to make it better and really listen to the, the actual RC community. Probably more so, I think, than any other RC company. Uh, they really, and I know it's a balance between cost and what makes sense, you know? Because uh, if, if they just went ahead and did everything that I would like them to do, it would probably be, you know, uh, $1,500 truck by the time you get it. So, but when I'm done with it, 
it will be probably over that so anyway this is Fox and this is FXRC and this has been my first look and what I plan to do with the new Arma Creighton EXB Extreme Bash Roller. So I can't wait to, to actually get some of these on there, get some electronics in there and, and get this out and see what it's capable of. This is Fox FXRC and thank you for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe, hit the like button. It doesn't cost you anything and it helps me out. So thank you so much. Peace.